All right, welcome to our next episode in our journey. We are journeying through our Bibles and uh, we started with Genesis chapter uh, 1 and we are at Genesis chapter 27 today. There are so many interesting things we have discovered, uncovered. And as the uh, topic, Genesis, which means beginning, we are still at the beginning, folks, of uh, many foundational principles that are going to become so necessary for you to understand your Bible. I want you to understand your Bible. Um, have you noticed how most teaching preaching you hear today it's the, the real goal of it is to make you feel good or make you feel better and it's about making you feel good making you feel better and uh, that's great the Bible is filled with many precious promises and much hope and all of that but the ninety percent of your Bible is is having a, a a a foundation understanding of you know all the historical characters and their roles and their purpose in bringing to pass what God's ultimate plan was and is and Ultimately, while we are beneficiaries of that plan, really it, the plan was always about Jesus Christ. And so while, you know, 95% of your messages today seems to be about you, the believer, really, you know, it's, it's, if you're not in Christ, if you don't understand how the scriptures point to Christ, um, you know, you, you can you can feel good and 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 it gives you this emotional sedation that you know for the moment you can you can feel good in your circumstance and and so forth, um, but ultimately you miss out on the real eternal promises. Uh, that God has uh, for us and how uh, we should take hold of it and, and benefit uh, from it. You don't have to be a, a, a convention junkie. You don't have to be uh, someone who, again, is, is, you know, uh, you, you have to depend upon someone to tell you that the Lord is going to bless you and you know um, we need to have a conviction within ourselves based upon our understanding of the Word of God that even if my pastor is not on Facebook for a whole week I have something on the inside that is sustaining me. I, I don't need to have someone in front of me every day telling me that the Lord is going to bless me and today is going to work out all right. No, that is that God did not intend for us to be uh, 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 become junkies like that. Uh, no, saints, we need to have a good spiritual diet in the Word of God so that like Joseph who was abandoned in a strange land without a pastor and without a Bible but yet there was conviction in him like Daniel 
and the three Hebrew boys purposed within themselves, captives in a strange land, uh, without a pastor, without anyone having to remind them every day that the Lord was going to bless them. Uh, we, 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 I, I am hoping that we can develop people who are a little bit more uh, grounded in the truth than that. Uh, and so that's why it is so important for us to understand these foundational principles. It will change your perspective on the entire world and uh, upon uh, your Christian walk. So Genesis 27, uh, it continues. We talked about uh, now we're dealing with uh, Jacob and Esau and Isaac is now old. And it, the Bible says his eyes were dim so that he could not see. And so while he had, he was experiencing blindness, and uh, he's probably 130 something years old at this time, and uh, his sons are in their 70s, so please don't think that these are two young 30, 40 year old strapping young men. They are in their 70s. And uh, he calls Esau and said, uh, uh, I am old, I know not the day of my death. Uh, go and make me some venison, some savory meat uh, that I may eat and my soul bless thee before I die. Um, again, uh, Isaac would live um, many years after this. All right. Uh, he was not near death, and um, the birthright had already been uh, stolen by Jacob. And so Isaac would have known that the birthright would belong to uh, Jacob and not Esau. Uh, somehow, Isaac seemed here to have... <laughs> Uh, not been uh, uh, thinking or operating uh, normally in terms of uh, what made him think he was near death um, and what made him believe that he needed to now offer this deathbed blessing. And um, there's some questions that surrounds Is uh, Isaac's frame of mind, um, why he would uh, <clears throat> initiate this, right? Uh, it, it would appear that he was not uh, spiritually inclined to do this. This perhaps was something he just wanted to do. Esau being his favorite son, <clears throat> after knowing that Jacob stole the birthright, and so the blessing would it was, it was something uh, separate. We talked more about this in the last lessons. You can go back and, and look at the last episode <clears throat> for detail on the, the difference between the birthright and the blessing. And so the one with the birthright would also receive a, a good portion of the blessing. Um, but yet, Isaac seemed... To want to counteract that, so there's some, there's some. He's not acting, he's not acting spiritual then, uh, uh, at this point. Now, verse five, Rebecca heard when Isaac sp uh, spake to Esau, and Rebecca spake to Jacob and said, "I heard thy father speak. Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat." And so, uh, obey my voice. Go to the flock. Uh, get two kids of the goats <coughs> and make him savory meat for thy father. And uh, Jacob said, uh, My brother's a hairy man. I'm a smooth man. <coughs> Peradventure he'll feel me and I'll seem to him as a deceiver. His mother said upon me, Be thy curse, my son, obey my voice. All right. Um, now, Jacob was reluctant. Uh, it was his mother who uh, 
cooked up the plan to deceive uh, her husband. And so the trait that we see in Jacob, uh, we can see this same trait in his mother. And, uh, you know, much more could be said on that. Again, please feel free to leave comments and questions. We can always delve deeper into things uh, as you respond. Uh, chapter 28 says, Isaac called Jacob, blessed him, and charged him, said unto him, Thou shalt not take away the daughters of Canaan. Go to Paden Aram, and God shall bless thee. Verse 3 said, And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Verse 3. Alright, so let's 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 break down some of what's going on here, right? First of all, Esau, who is called Edom, he would marry the daughters of in the land Canaanites and <coughs> it is out of Esau and Edom most of the Arab world today comes from most of the Arab world carries within it the genes of Esau <coughs> in particularly in particular <laughs> The Turkish population, which at that time would incorporate Aram or Syria. The Turkish population is related to Esau. M most Syrians, the Kurds, people of Iraq, right? The Ottoman Empire that most of us have heard about were a dominant tribe of the nation of Turkey. And these Turks were descendants of Esau. And these Turks are Muslim. Alright? And so, you see, the Kurds, the Turks, the Syrians, the Iraqis, they are when you, when you hear about them talk about the the the, the, the tr different tribes Sunni tribe, right? The different tribes, but they are all descendants of Esau. They are Edomites, and you will see later on where Esau actually now marries with within Ishmael. Right? So in Bible prophecy, you're going to see where the Turks play a primary role in the events of Revelation. Right? So, majority of the Muslims in the world today are related to Esau, even those in Afghanistan. So this 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 warfare strife that we are watching is between two brothers Israel and all of these other nations who make up who comprise our descendants of Esau and they are the ones they have everything to do with the condition of the world now and our current situation in the Middle East which will lead up to the Great Tribulation. That's, that's so important for us to understand here that we're seeing Jacob and Esau through this deception and this robbing of birthright and blessing, this hatred causing Jacob to flee, right? It is still today apparent 
in the relationship between all of these nations that we just talked about. If you notice, whenever there's any war that is about to arise in the Middle East, all of a sudden Israel has to put itself on a war footing, even if it has nothing to do with them. As long as war breaks out, they're going to point missiles and send missiles on Israel because of this long standing feud. Right? Now, it says concerning Esau, he says, By your sword you shall live. In other words, Violence shall be Esau's way of gaining wealth and prosperity. <coughs> right? So when you see the rise of ISIS and all of these extremists <coughs> within Islam, right? This is also a fulfillment of the type of character that Isaac prophesied that they would possess all right all right <clears throat> so what is prophesied concerning Esau and his descendants is on a future time right Esau's descendants didn't become shepherds they became conquerors, right, and robbers who descended on caravans and passed through their, that passed through their lands. Esau's descendants, war would be their way of life. And war is now at the heart of extremist Islam. Okay, <clears throat> now he also blessed Esau, right? Ver that, that's 27 verse 40 says, And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Right? So we, let's not hurry over that because that is vital to the current news. And I know while the world is dealing with a pandemic now, a pandemic now uh, we know that uh, aside from our political distractions and this pandemic distraction uh, the news <clears throat> is, is generally uh, filled, the world news is generally filled with some uh, 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 some type of unrest whether it's between Iran or Syria or Turkey or somewhere in the Middle East uh, that's where the news generally is focused on and you know once all of this unrest is over ultimately it will get back there we we see that uh, uh israel is you know in terms of trying to rebuild their temple and and peace accords and all these things, those are hotbed issues that ultimately we will have to get back to because that will be prominent in the last days okay so again we're trying to teach you to understand your bible and realize that even though we're talking about genesis the first book there are implications and ramifications that are being played out right before our eyes today so he says you will serve your brother and then you'll break the yoke now king david who, what, he was the first descendant of Jacob to rule over the descendants of Esau. Okay? So Israel dominated Esau from 1000 BC 
to about 735 BC, right? And then it was King Ahaz of Judah who lost control of the Edomite nation and the descendants of Esau uh, have been in control ever since, right? And that explains why the Palestinians today, they are there as a thorn in Israel's side because most Palestinians also associate themselves with Esau. Now, in Genesis 12, God said to Abraham that uh, he would be a father of nations. And we talked about the Goim, Gentile nations, right? And you've heard me say it before, and you'll hear me say it again, that Abraham had, in particular, we know he had sons with Keturah, we're not going to uh, be focused on those. But as far as his sons are, we have Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac would be the first Hebrew in particular, Ishmael would be a, a, a Gentile, if you want to now begin this distinction. But yet, when Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau, Esau, Edomites, would now become a part of the Goim, the nations, the Gentiles, Jacob would be separated as a Hebrew. Remember we said Eber, from where we get Hebrew, means to cross over, which is a separation, right? Okay, so with the birth of Ishmael and Isaac, there was a fork in the road then. Right? Hebrew and non-Hebrew offspring would occur. Alright? Now then we have Jacob and Esau, another fork in the road. Hebrew and non-Hebrew. In Genesis 28 verse 3, right? You read it says, Thou mayest be a multitude of people. Right? Uh, it really is, it says, Kahal Amim. That is the Hebrew word. Right? It is not a mixture of nations. Right? It really means that he would become a holy people, right? He would be a people for set apart purposes, uh, an assembly of people for holy purposes. Okay? That is the distinction between Jacob and Esau. While Esau would become the Edomites from where the Arabs, and remember he intermarried with the Canaanites, intermarried with the, the Ishmaelites, forming nations, Goim, Gentiles. You have this separation with Jacob, verse 3, thou mayest be a multitude of people, but not just Goim nations people, a holy set apart people. All of the descendants of Jacob now would be separated unto God. There's no more fork in the road. And I, I said it 
before and you'll hear me say it again because this was by God's divine election. Jacob's name means supplanter, deceiver. It wasn't anything good in Jacob that God saw. It was simply God's divine election in choosing Jacob. That's why we read uh, in Romans where he says, Jacob have I loved, Esau I have I hated. And please, folks, do not allow Western philosophers to confuse you to think that the word love and hate has anything to do with emotions. All right? That's not what the Bible means when it says so. Love simply means to accept. Hate means to reject. When God said, I have accepted Jacob, it simply means that I have chosen him and I've chosen him for my own purpose, for my own means. I know his attitude. I know the type of heart he has. And I have chosen him for my glory. And Esau, I have rejected him. I know his attitude that he's going to have, the man he's going to be. The type of attitude he's going to have, what his desires are going to be, and I have rejected that. It's simply about accepting and rejecting. What are the qualities? Jacob represents qualities, and not necessarily qualities or character uh, uh, that is uh, uh, <coughs> without fault or impeccable. Qualities more have to do with faith, right? Whereas Esau's qualities, he preferred the things of the flesh, world, natural things, carnal things. And so because God in his foreknowledge knew the type of character these individuals would be, he chose and accepted and loved Jacob and rejected Esau. All right, now, again, the election of Jacob is the foundation for the election of Jesus Christ. Jacob becomes an a figure, an allegory, we talked about allegory, of Jesus Christ chosen, elected by God, that out of him, Jesus Christ, there would come, just like he says here in verse 3, a multitude of people out of Jacob, so a multitude of people would come out of Jesus Christ. That's how you and I are elected. God did not sit in eternity and say, I elect Jane Myers to be saved in 2019. And it doesn't matter what she does, she's going to be saved. That is not election, folks. Jesus Christ is the elect. And we have been chosen in Christ Jesus. The only way you are chosen is to become a part of the family of God in Christ Jesus. And that's why most preachers, if they're honest to the gospel, should emphasize how you get into Christ and how you stay into Christ because that is the only time and the only way that your salvation is guaranteed. It is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Jacob, there would be a holy 
company of people. All right. Now, uh, Jacob now would be, his name would be changed to Israel. He would be the first in the line of covenant promise to produce only Hebrew people. All right, only a nation of Hebrew crossing over, and we're get, gonna get into more more into crossing over, and you'll see where uh, baptism now becomes how we cross over and become spiritual Hebrews. Right? So again, let me summarize. Abraham produced both Hebrew and non-Hebrew. All right? Isaac, being Hebrew, produced Hebrew and non-Hebrew. Jacob, being Hebrew, but he produced only Hebrews. All the tribes of Israel, which is what the blessing of Kahal Amim, that is the Hebrew word, a holy convocation, a set apart people means. If you don't, you need to make sure you understand, play this over and over again. And make sure you understand this. This is election. This is the doctrine of election. I want to talk a little bit about, before we close on this, when Jacob uh, left to go to Haran in verse 12 of chapter 28. And he dreamed. Verse 11 says, He lighted upon a certain place, tarried there, because the sun was set, took stones, made pillows, lay down to sleep. He dreamed, behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached heaven. Angels ascending and descending on the ladder, and the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, God of Isaac, and, thy, and, 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 and you can read the rest of this verse. I am with thee, will keep thee, and all that profound, powerful dream that uh, Jacob had. Let's put this in context, folks. God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says that God would commune with Adam in the cool of the day. So there was a linkage between heaven and earth in the garden. When man sinned, that was broken. You don't read anywhere in the story of Noah, in the story of Abraham or Isaac, where there is any connection. Yes, we know that uh, uh, when, when God made the covenant with Abraham, uh, you know, he fell asleep and there was a horror of darkness and the, the furnace and the, the, the sacrifices. We read that. But there, there, was, there is nothing about a vision of God or a dream or any interaction per se with God from heaven speaking or any linkage. We have angels coming and we have all these different things going on. In your Bible, yes, and, and, and Abraham and, and the angel and Hagar and the angel. But here we have Jacob dreaming this dream and seeing this ladder. What is the ladder? The ladder represents access, right? Whereas before, angels would speak, God would come down. And there was a communication coming down. Even in the garden, God would come down and speak to man. But there was still access to heaven was, was barred. But here with the ladder, what God is doing is showing that with Jacob, the one who is elected, the connection is reestablished. What, it, what was broken in Eden is now reestablished with Jacob. All right? And that is also a prefigure of Jesus Christ. Right? This is a prefigure of Christ. All right? It's a stairway between heaven and earth. Right? It represents the connection between man and God that was broken man could come directly to god in the garden 
but now because of rebellion, man could not come directly to God. All right? But now God was saying through Jacob, the elect, the head, right? The federal head of the Hebrew people now, right? A called out, set apart people. The reconnection was taking place. Here's what Jesus said in John 1 51. Truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So angels and angels ascending and descending upon this ladder in Jacob's dream is a pre remember I'm telling you everything is about Jesus. Don't let preachers fool you to make you think it's all about you that you can just live as how you please and God is going to bless you and God has chosen you and it doesn't matter what you do. Listen, the Bible is about Jesus Christ. And the only way that God will know you are me or will accept you or I, it is only through Jesus Christ. He is the door. He is the access. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the ladder. I'm getting excited. <laughs> So I don't need a preacher to tell me, oh, the Lord says you're going to be blessed today. No, baby. As long as I am in Christ Jesus, I am blessed. I felt the Holy Ghost just descend on me in another way. He's in me, but he comes up around and on and through and he moves. But I felt God just confirm that for somebody today. All right. Jacob marks a turning point. And remember, all, Jesus says, all that is written in the law and the prophets and the Psalms was concerning him. So here Jacob selected, elected, separated to be the head of an exclusive people. And seeing this ladder with angels descending, the linkage reattached between God and man points to Jesus Christ. Please, that is what it means to be elected. Every male child that would be born to Jacob and circumcised would be a set-apart people. Everyone that is born again in Jesus Christ, circumcised of the heart, is elected. That is the only way. Not in some unknown time before the world began was Peter, Paul, Mary, Sue chosen and elected and He's going to drag you in whether you want to come or not. Please, folks, please. That is Western philosophy. That's what that is. Western philosophy it is not based upon Scripture. And remember, your Old Testament is Scripture. That's what Peter alluded to when he talks about Scripture. That's what Paul was speaking about when they said all scripture is given for reproof, for correction, for instruction. That's what they were talking about, the Old Testament. So preachers today, because they still want to run and hide, they say, well, it's not in the New Testament. That is a cop-out. That is from people who don't want to fess up and tell you the truth that they really don't know their scriptures. Although they say sola scriptura, they don't know their scriptures because they don't understand the Old Testament. Please, get into Christ. All right? Except a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto thee, he must 
be born into the spiritual Jacob who is Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We look forward to seeing you next time. Please feel free. Leave comments. Leave questions. I'll take, I can take some disagreement. I have uh, completed my uh, apologetics class and they've taught me how to better defend this gospel and give a reason for this hope. And a um, uh, great teacher just heard that he was diagnosed with cancer, Ravi Zacharias. Uh, don't agree with uh, some of his theology, but great teacher. Uh, we're praying for him. Uh, just completed one, another one of his classes. And so I don't mind disagreements. I don't mind uh, disagreements. Let's communicate. Subscribe, share, tell your friends. God bless.